So in the previous lesson, we looked at how to solve a system of n linear equations with n unknowns using naive Gaussian elimination method. Now in this lesson, we are going to discuss the pitfalls or problems with naive Gaussian elimination and how to address these problems by employing a more improved technique. So with the pitfalls or problems of naive Gaussian elimination, naive Gaussian elimination is going to fail if any one of the pivot element is either a zero or a very small number a very small number so naive gaussian elimination is going to fail if any of the pivot element is either a zero or a very small number now if any of the pivot element is a zero then we encounter what we call division by zero division by zero and this introduces an overflow error since division by zero is not defined and then if any of the pivot element is a very small number then it also introduces what we call large round of error into the system large round of error in the system and this may alter the solution of the system that is it may introduce large errors in the solution and that is not desired so basically these are the two main problems or pitfalls of naive gaussian elimination method so how then do we go about such situations when we come across them and that leads us to our lesson for today so in today's lesson we are going to learn how to solve a system of n linear equations with n unknowns using gaussian elimination with partial pivoting so we have an example here let's try to solve this example together so we have a system of three equations with three unknowns and then as we know from the previous lesson the first thing we are going to do is to represent this system in an augmented form so here we are going to write down the coefficients of x1 x2 and then x3 now for the first equation coefficient of x1 is 0 we have this to be 2 coefficient of x2 coefficient of x3 that is 5 on the right hand side we have 7 so let's try to complete the augmented form of this system so we have a 7 1 negative 2 6 2 3 8 and then 13 so after representing this system in an augmented form just like naive gaussian elimination we are going to do forward elimination and back substitution now the only difference is that because we are solving using gaussian elimination with partial pivoting for each forward elimination step we are going to do partial pivoting here we have three equations so we are going to perform n minus one steps so that is three minus one steps which is two steps so we have two forward elimination steps now the first forward elimination six to make these two values go to zero and then the second step six to make this value go to zero so in all we are going to obtain an upper triangular matrix where these set of values go to zero so let's consider the first step of forward elimination so to do so we are going to consider row one as the pivot row and then the first element which is zero as the pivot element now you realize that we have the first element here to be a zero therefore we are going to encounter what you call division by zero so that is where partial pivoting comes to play so what you are going to do is to do partial pivoting we are going to consider the first column of this augmented matrix and then we try to fish out the largest absolute value now you need to understand that the absolute value of a negative value is positive and the absolute value of a positive value is also positive so here when we are talking about absolute values we don't include the signs or we neglect the sign whether it's a positive value or a negative value so we try to fish out the largest absolute value and that is 7 and this 7 is found in row 2 therefore we are going to switch these two rows that is row 1 and then row 2 so we are going to obtain our new augmented matrix 
having components 7, 1, negative 2, 6, and then row 1 comes to row 2. So we have 0, 2, 5, 7, and then row 3 remains the same. So 2, 3, 8, 13. Now at this point, we can perform forward elimination. So we want to make these two values go to 0. We already have a 0 here, so we focus on row 3. So what do we do? We perform elementary row operations on row 3. And what is the operation? We are going to multiply row 1 by 2 over 7. And then we subtract that from row 3. Now first element of row 1 is 7. So if we put a 7 here, 7 cancels out 7. We are left with 2. We subtract that from 2 and then we have a 0 here. So this is the operation we are going to perform on row 3. So we are going to have the augmented matrix, our new augmented matrix, having components 7, 1, negative 2, 6, 0, 2, 5, 7. And then now 2 minus 2 over 7 times 7 becomes 0. And then we move on to the second column. We have 3 minus 2 over 7 times 1. That becomes 19 over 7. Next column, we have 8 minus 2 over 7 times negative 2. And that becomes 60 over 7. Next column, we have 13 minus 2 over 7 times 6. And that becomes 79 over 7. So this is the end of the first step of the forward elimination or the first forward elimination step. So now let's move on to the second forward elimination step. So with that, we seek to make this value also go to zero. Now, because we are dealing with partial pivoting, we are going to do partial pivoting before we do forward elimination for the second step. Now, we look at this column and then we try to fish out the largest absolute value. So the largest absolute value is 19 over 7. This is because 19 over 7 is 2.7 something so on and so forth. So since 2.7 is greater than 2, it means we are going to interchange these two rows. We are going to swap these two rows. So we do that and then we obtain new augmented matrix having component 7, 1, negative 2, 6, 0, 19, over 7, 60, over 7, 79, over 7, and then 0, 2, 5, 7. So you need to understand that for any forward elimination step, you need to do partial pivoting. So at this point, we can do forward elimination. That is the second forward elimination. So we want to make this value become zero. So we perform elementary row operations on row three. And what is the operation? We are going to multiply row two by two over 19 over seven. And then we subtract the results from row three. So considering the second element of row two, that is 19 over 7. If you put 19 over 7 here, 19 over 7 cancels out 19 over 7. We are left with a 2 here. We subtract that 2 from this 2 and then we have a 0 here. So that is the operation we are going to perform on row 3. So row 1 and then row 2 remains unchanged. And then we work out on row 3. So for row 3, considering the first column, we have 0 minus 2 over 19 over 7 times 0. That gives 0. We move on to the next column. We have 2 minus 2 over 19 over 7 times 19 over 7. That also gives a 0. We move on to the next column. We have 5 minus 2 over 19 over 7 times 60 over 7. 
and that gives negative 25 over 19 next to the next column we have 7 minus 2 over 19 over 7 times 79 over 7 and that also gives negative 25 over 19 so this is the end of the forward elimination step now in the next step you are going to perform back substitution so for back substitution we understand that x1 corresponds to column 1 x2 corresponds to column 2 and then x3 corresponds to column 3 so beginning from row 3 we are going to have negative 25 over 19 times x3 equals negative 25 over 19 now comparing the left hand side and the right hand side of this equation you realize that we have x3 to be equal to 1 so that is the value of x3 now let's move on to row 2 so basically we are going to input 1 in place of x3 so for row 2 we have 19 over 7 x2 plus 60 over 7 x3 in place of x3 we have 1 and that is equal to 79 over 7 now we can cancel out 7 because it's common to each term and thus we have 19 x2 plus 60 equals 79 so we transpose 60 to the right hand side we have 79 minus 60 and that is equal to 19 so we divide through by 19 and you realize that we have a 1 therefore we have x2 to be equal to 1 now we move on to row 1 we have 7 x1 plus 1 x2 so x2 is 1 so 1 times 1 that is 1 minus 2 times x3 x3 is also 1 so that becomes minus 2 and that is equal to 6 so we have 7 x1 equals 6 plus 2 minus 1 6 plus 2 is 8 minus 1 is 7 so we have 7 x1 equals 7 we divide through by 7 and then we have x1 equals 1 therefore you realize that x1 is equal to 1 x2 is equal to 1 and then x3 is also equal to 1 therefore the solution vector the solution vector x is equal to the column matrix 1 1 1